So right now they're on a timer, and there's no, there's a click. I, it takes some getting used to. So, you know, they're on, they're on the, the ripper there. But you just gotta touch it. There's no detent if it's on a timer. There's no like, like a John Deere. It's on a timer, you know, you can feather it. If it's on a timer, you can, you know, you're get, you can feather a little bit. But this, all you do is just touch it and the timer goes. And you, you're, you're in the middle, of, oh, I just need to go up a little bit. And you gotta, you gotta push it again to stop it. Well, then you oh, stop. I, I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not. But there's a detent as well. And I really don't know what it. Uh, I, I don't. What do we got going here? There it goes. This, I don't know. It's just getting used to, or it might need a little refining. I don't know. It must be nice. It must work because they use it over there. But it, you know, you just touch it and it goes. And there's no. Oh well, whatever. Oh, okay, I see what it does here. You push it all the way forward into like the deep, the click. It's still going, but really, oh, it's float. Float both ways. Okay, I got you. Well, something to be improved, I think, in my opinion here on that part. Um, but hey, it works. So pretty clean. You guys, you got work lights down here, air conditioner here. Um, you got all your PTO stuff. You're really easy to get to. You don't got to go hunting in a menu for it. It's just right here. Uh, diff lock, front suspension on, no suspension, automatic, three points, um, you know, auto steer, steering valve on, auto steer engaged, um, yeah. Three point, I really like this. You know, you can adjust, you just, you just dial it in. There's no going into a screen to, you know, you pull this like you're, uh, you know, it's just, it's, I don't know, it seems really easy. Not, no, you gotta go hunting in there for it. Nope, it's right here. Front piece, this got, well, front and rear here. So, that's pretty neat. I like it. Not sure what the other, I mean, it's your high and low limit. I mean, it's like your high and your low, I don't know. I don't have a three-point implement, so I couldn't tell you. But, you know, you got your pretty, pretty simple. Looks like you got a, you can set for your PTO, so when you lift up, I would assume. Oh, no, that's your full-on PTO switch. Eh, let's see, kind of out of the way. If you're a lot of PTO work, kind of out of the way there. But, get used to it, I guess. Um... One thing I noticed when we hooked it up, he, I asked him, where's number one for the remotes? He goes, well, it doesn't really matter. And what do you mean it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Because you can program any of these to anything you want, pretty much. So, you know, usually one is on the left or the, the bottom, and that's how you, or top, whatever you want to do. But this one is kind of right to hook it wherever you want. Okay. So you can go into, uh, oh, where was that at? Give me a second here. And you can change them around. Where you want, you got, you know, you got your, your joystick here, blade work, loader work. But you can also, you know, you hook them up in whatever order and you just go figure out, okay, that's for your Coulters, your Packer, your up and down. You need to change them to whatever you want. That would be pretty. This uh, that that option's pretty cool. It's say you know all main all implement manufacturers are a little different. You know, say everything comes out on the right hand side, and you got a PTO shaft running up there. Well, I particularly don't care to run lines and stuff over a PTO shaft, even though they got a guard on them. It just it's always just kind of bugged me doing that. So you know if you can put all your remotes, you plug. 
you know, stuffing on the right side, stuffing on the left side, you can avoid that. Um, not always a perfect world, though. So, this is actually fairly easy. I got into it and I was kind of like, how do I get this thing to move? So, you pretty much, uh, you get your, your foot throttle minimum maximum over here. So, and it only go to, you know, that's, you know, yeah. So you get your foot throttle maximum here. Here's your other throttle. It works here. That's your your PTO speed. You want to set your constant engine speeds. PTO work right here. You know, thing only goes to 1800 RPM. That's all. That's all it's got. Um, kind of shocked me at first. So, but you know, you're doing regular draft work. You just oh, you just leave it all the way down. So right here on the side. You've got your the focus here. One, two, three, four. So it's how aggressive when you push it, how aggressive it, it it ramps up the speed. So one, you know, creeper mode. Two, like field work. You know, three would be like pulling a fertilizer spreader or a sprayer where you're, you know, coming down to six miles an hour, jump back up to 16, 14, whatever you are. Then you got your road mode. That's just opinion there. So, all you do to get going here is here's a little clicker on the back. You just push it and push it forward. And you go. Um, and then you just, after that, you just kind of keep bumping it until you are moving. Uh, pretty simple. You know, then to stop, you just hold it all the way back and you stop. But you do have to, then to go to reverse, you just say you just pull it, or click click the button, pull it back, and you just bump it. And then to stop, you just hold it all the way forward, and it'll come to stop. It won't go forward, and it won't go, you know, if you just keep holding it, it won't go from reverse to stop to forward. It stops when it gets to zero. Um, actually, you just pull it, push forward, and just keep bumping or you hold it, and whatever you want to do there. It's pretty cool. I really liked it. Um, so, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. The steering wheel on this thing. You let go, and it'll come back to center for you. All by itself here. Um, I guess. I don't know. Good or bad, I, I couldn't tell you. Really, to be honest with you. Um... I, and you know, it goes back to center by itself, and it, it'll like keep steering its, see, it's moving by itself here. Does it have like a built-in angle, well obviously it has an angle sense for your auto steer, but will it keep you going in a straight line just based on keeping the wheel straight? Whatever, you know, whatever angle you, you set it here. So you just head this way. Hey, well, I, I don't know. I haven't tried that. i just been using auto track here. So, I don't know. Good or bad, I couldn't really tell you. So, I asked the salesman, I said, well, how do you, you know, you're on a deer, you got, you know, one and two. You set your speeds, turn around, this and that. He says, well, this is how you do this. So you come over here, to like C1, C2. So you set, you know, hit C1. Oh. Come on. Oh, you gotta turn it on here. I'm trying to figure this out. How do you do that? Oh, that's not what I'm gonna do. Tractor. There we go. So you highlight it red, you go, you just click it, and you use your little roller wheel here. You say you want 5.5. Hit okay, you come over here, set C1 to 4. Okay. Um, then, to, okay. So, to activate those two, I was like, okay, what do you got going? You got two buttons for this, what do you do? So, 
we're gonna come down to a stop here. And it'll tell you which way you're going here. Which, yeah, it's pretty cool. If you don't know what way you're going. You know, maybe if you're go I don't know. I guess I guess you need something to tell you which direction you're going if you don't know. Um okay, so got my two set speeds here. So to uh so you're going here, let's keep moving. So I got uh Okay, so we turned it on, they're highlighted, so you just you just take this and you just slap it to the right, not slightly, and it'll turn it green. So right now it's gonna do 5.5 for us. Then to go to the other, so C1, you just double click and it takes us down to the other one. Pretty pretty easy, right? You know, I thought it was gonna be a little more in depth than that, but you know, fair enough. Pretty easy, pretty easy to be honest with you. Um Okay. Here's the other cool thing about this tractor. I don't got the auto steer on, we're just gonna do this for a little demonstration purposes here. Okay, we're gonna sink this ripper in the ground here in a second. Okay? Alright. Alright, that thing is just sunk down here. Okay. We're doing every bit of five miles an hour at 1250 RPM, 1210. And we got a little bit of slip going on there. It's pretty soft ground. That's 16 foot at about 14 inches deep, 15 shank ripper. And it runs there all day long. It doesn't, I mean, that's where it goes. That's where it runs. I'm pretty impressed on that part, really. You know, no four-wheel drive, like I said, no four-wheel drive button. It'll, um, if you're watching it, it'll trip you out because you'll be going, and then the front wheels will speed up and slow down, and the back does the same thing versus where you need more traction at the time. Um, kind of cool, really, to be honest with you. But yeah, 1200 RPM, 13. I mean, and fairly quiet in here, really. I mean, not too loud, pretty quiet. But yeah, you know, and it's got it was a 12.4 liter man, I think it's got. Um, when that thing starts working, there's been spots out here where that thing will start working. Oh, you can tell there's a there's some displacement sitting up there. It really starts grunting, and you're like, oh man. There's there's some there's some cubic inches up there. So, pretty pretty neat, really. I like it. But yeah, just. Then you, you know you get to the end here and you just double click that and it'll turn down to four miles an hour um turn around do whatever you need <clears throat> so oh well, yeah really really cool um so yeah then you just double click this again here 5.5 go back up uh we're gonna disable it here so when you just click it to the right it enables it Click it again, it shuts it off. So, um, yeah. So let's go. Uh, I don't really mess with this whole aggressiveness thing here. So we're gonna bring it down to a stop here. Oh yeah, you can even tell right now. Okay. See how long it's taking me to stop? I turned it down to one here. I'll well, see. We're still moving. Oh man. I've been holding that thing forward since I started moving here. Yeah. So, creeper. Creeper transmission status right there. Okay, so let's go to number two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that speed cloud. There we go, okay. Alright, so let's stop here. Let's go to three. Oh, yeah, you can tell. A lot, uh... Oh, you go to four. Oh, yeah. That's like road moving stuff right there. Um, 
See, I mean, not a bad tractor. I mean, really, really comfortable to sit in all day. I'll tell you that. This backrest that moves around on this seat, that is like, I don't know, whoever invented that needs to, like, give some other seat manufacturers a lesson on making a backrest. I don't, it just, it's comfortable. To be honest with you, it is really comfortable. And this armrest, I mean, it, it, it's a, something so small on a tractor like this. On any tractor, the, the armrest here. But it's it's soft. It's, you know, it's not rubber or plastic or you know, whatever the heck some of them are made out of. You can, it's just comfortable to have on all day. You know, you don't sweat and it gets sticky and wet, you know. I mean, yeah. So, let's slow down here. So yeah, anyways, that's it. Um, you know, when that ripper was in down there, it was burning about 15 gallons an hour, which I tell you what, that's a far cry from uh, 25, the old 8960 was burning. So, and this is more horsepower, and it was doing about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile faster. So, yeah. Um, that's about it, really. But like I said, you know, a few little things, but not a lot. Um, and you know, if you're used to a one brand, you know, that we've been green for quite all of our hay equipment's Agco. We've had Agco hay equipment forever. Um, but our tractor's always been green. You know, it's just, it's just different getting used to what you got going on over here. And over here. This, um, you know. If you didn't know how to get this thing to move by pushing the button on the back here, you'd have a hard time getting it to go somewhere. But it just takes someone telling you one time and you got to figure it out. Um, this is the other thing too. Gas loaded, gas shock loaded up and down here. Pretty, pretty slick really. Then the forward and back, I mean... That, that's pretty cool. I like how easy it moves. It's not big and knobs to turn and, you know, half the time it's not where you like it, so you just deal with it, but you don't want to, you don't want to get down there and, you know, King Kong tightened it up the last time and so you can't move it. But that's pretty cool. You just pull the little handle there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, man. That's pretty good. Pretty good stiffness gas shock back there so yep um yeah i mean really quiet i mean i'd say it came a long way from uh it's really the last first of all there is no last version of this tractor so it's really i really like it i really like it quite a quite a nice machine so yeah uh, exhaust brake it does have an exhaust brake. It's just uh, not not an engine brake, exhaust brake. The, uh, the v, you know, VGT and the turbo. You just hit it right there. You know if you got a trailer on, or exhaust brake right there. Um, that'd be pretty cool. You know grain carts and the Palouse. I'd really like that. So I know some of the bigger uh, case and New Holland machines. They're 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 bigger models. The stuff thing with the with the twelve five liter. 12.5 I'm not real too big I'm not too familiar with case but we do have a quad track but it's got the 9 liter um, road track sorry road track with a 9 liter they have an exhaust brake I know that's really popular and then like I know uh, older engines you know come in some of the cats some come anyway where you can put an actual engine brake on those are real popular for uh, grain carts steep hills and whatnot so anyways yeah, you know, really simple. I like it. Um, yeah. Nice, like I said, nice door latch to get out. You know, it's not some bulky, you know, quick, easy. You got a little storage here. You know, sweatshirt, gloves, whatever. A lot of storage down here, a cup holders. You know, like I said, really nice seat. I'll get back here so you can look at this seat. Look how that backrest moves all the way around there. 
I really like that. That's pretty handy. I really that's it's something I'm really digging on this thing. Especially when you're over six foot tall. You know. You gotta you get some guys that work for us, they can sit sideways in that seat all day and it doesn't bug them. But their legs don't go past they're dangling on the floor really. Um anyway, I got it has the, the shuttle right here. But they say that's like doing blade work, silage work. you know, repetitive back and forth, so yeah. You know? So yeah. Nice little tractor. I won't say little. Nice big tractor.